Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, senators want more state power to regulate air ambulance services, satellite business to start production on the Florida Space Coast, Spitfire props to be made in the UK. I'm Brie Cross, it's April 20th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. One of the many amendments to the FAA reauthorization bill being debated in the U.S. Senate could change the way states regulate air ambulance services. The issue has been in the forefront in Montana, where consumers have been hit with large and unexpected charges for air ambulance services. State lawmakers say they are limited in what they can do because of federal laws. The amendment offered by Senators John Hoven and John Tester would give states more control over the regulations of air ambulance services, according to a report from Montana Public Radio. But passage of the amendment is not a sure thing. Under current federal law, states are not allowed to regulate rates, routes, or services provided by air ambulances. What has commonly been referred to as the Florida Space Coast saw its heyday during the race to space during the 1960s and waned as the space shuttle program was shut down. Now business is picking up again as satellite manufacturer OneWeb plans to open a $36 million factory in the area that will generate as many as 250 jobs, according to media reports. The plan was confirmed yesterday at a ceremony attended by OneWeb officials and Florida Governor Rick Scott. According to reports, the factory will be built at Kennedy Space Center's Exploration Park on Merritt Island. One web plans to build and launch some 900 small satellites that would fly at an altitude of 750 miles. The company says the satellites will help bring affordable internet access to underserved areas, as well as provide additional broadband services for aircraft, oil rigs, and ships at sea. After the break, original Spitfire propeller drawings found. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. As the Warbird movement continues to expand, there is a large demand for propeller blades for Spitfire aircraft in the UK. So when Hercules Propeller's founder, Rupert Wesley, acquired about 200 original drawings of the original props for the iconic World War II fighter, he counted himself very lucky. The UK newspaper, The Stroud News and Journal, reports that currently the only company that can provide propeller blades for the Spitfires is located in Germany, and you don't have to look very far to see the irony in that. Wesley acquired the drawings through a business that bought a company which had produced the propellers in the 1950s. The original drawings, dating back to the 1930s, were offered to Wasley, whose company produces reproduction propellers. Government approval in the manufacturing process has yet to be established, but Wasley hopes that in about a year, props for the Spitfire airplanes will once again be manufactured in the UK. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. They called me and said, hey, we really want to pull this off. How can we round up the Warbirds? So we got ourselves involved, the Commander of Air Force. We've got 162 airplanes around the country. As we get ready for next week's Aircraft Electronics Association annual convention in Orlando, Florida, this video reminds us of the varied subjects we covered during our live broadcast from this event. This program from last year explains the Commemorative Air Force's Arsenal of Democracy project. Be sure to watch this year's live coverage starting on Wednesday, April 27th. Search AEA 2015 Commemorative Air Force on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Airbus Defense and Space faces an FAA fine. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. 
With Integral Backup Battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. And now Christopher is going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Bree. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom with Airborne Unlimited, bringing you today's Around the Patch. The FAA has proposed a $162,500 civil penalty against Airbus Defense in Space of Madrid, Spain. The FAA alleges that Airbus knowingly offered an undeclared hazardous material for shipment on passenger carrying aircraft from Seville, Spain to Miami, Florida. United Airlines is seeking an injunction against a self-proclaimed passenger rights advocate to take contact information from its UAL employees down from the non-airline website UNTIED.com. The airline says the site has resulted in ongoing harassment of its employees from unhappy passengers. Lockheed Martin has launched Generation Beyond, which is a national education program to bring the science of space into homes and classrooms across America. The program is designed to inspire the next generation of innovators, explorers, inventors, and pioneers to pursue STEM careers. The co-pilot of an E-Star Boeing 737 departing from Phuket International Airport suffered a heart attack in the cockpit just prior to takeoff. It's reported that the pilot complained of difficulty breathing and was not taken to a hospital. Unfortunately, he did not survive. CFM International delivered the first two production Leap 1A engines to Airbus earlier this month. The delivery paves the way for their installation on their first customer Leap A320neo aircraft, which is expected to enter into service by mid-year. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Back to you, Bree. Thanks, Christopher. A lawsuit has been filed over the aircraft accident that occurred during the making of the Tom Cruise movie, Mina. The widow of one of the two crewmen fatally injured when the plane went down has sued the production company and the estate of the pilot flying the airplane. The suit filed by Catherine Perwin, the widow of Alan Perwin, who was a passenger in the plane, states that the quote, defendants knew that the accident aircraft would be flown over rugged, mountainous terrain and in the Republic of Colombia, and yet failed to ensure that Carlos Burl was competent, qualified, rested, and sufficiently informed for the flight. Named as defendants in the suit are Cross Creek Pictures, Imagine Entertainment, Vindian Entertainment, and Quadrant Pictures. Perwin's family is also suing Burl's estate. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.